everyone, and welcome to another episode of Nolzer's Marvelous Tutorials with Realm Smith. Today, we are painting the Grung, these cute little super evil creatures um, that are jungle folk who uh, were originally um, in um, Chult, I think, uh, and they were introduced there, and then now uh, in Tomb of Annihilation, all that kind of stuff, but we're also now possibly maybe going to use them in our Tides of Wildmouth campaign. First, obviously, as always, we want to thank our sponsors and our partners, uh, Dungeons & Dragons, for helping us to have us on their channel, as well as helping us to do what we do. Uh, WizKids for all the incredible miniatures, and of course, Vallejo, our paid sponsor, for uh, the awesome paints that we use on a weekly basis. A um, couple quick announcements. First off, um, we are painting these grungs because they may or may not appear on our stream in the next little while, uh, and so keep an eye out for that. Um, we also want to uh, say that after this, directly after this, about half hour, so around 7.30 Eastern, uh, 8, sorry, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, we will be playing part two of our cyberpunk game uh, with Game Master Mike Pondsmith and guests Lou Gygax and Matthew Lillard and Nora and Beast and John Kovaleski. Um, I think I've said everybody. Uh, and myself. Uh, and we'll be playing that. It'll be so much fun. Please um, tune into that um, right after this is done, a half hour after. The, well, anyways, at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. It's going to be awesome. And then, of course, tomorrow night is our Tides of Wildmount campaign. Uh, last episode was really great. Second half was epic. Uh, and we are back into uh, sailing up and down the Menagerie Coast. I do have Josh in the studio today. He is helping me because not only knows I usually do solo, but today we are focusing on the cyberpunk thing after. I do need a producer for that. So we are social social distancing from across the studio safely. Um, but Josh is helping us out, and I am thankful that he is here. Um, if you like what you see, if you follow us, this little potion bottle should go purple once if you subscribe it should blink blue a bunch of times uh and that's just to let you know that we're here and we thank you uh for uh being with us and then of course consider making us your twitch prime subscription um because it doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps us to do what we do on a regular basis uh our moderator should be on i'm not sure if they are shadster um, and prometheus bound are our two mo new moderators thanks to them and of course josh will also be in the chat as well. Let's jump right in. Uh, we're going to try and get through this. We're doing three different grungs today. We're doing an orange one, a blue one, and a green one. I'll explain what their cast system was like in a little bit. We're going to use some Vallejo brushes. I've got a zero, a one, and I've, uh, sorry, I've got a two, a zero, and a Vallejo dry brush. Some water, of course, for um, rinsing your brushes and diluting your paints. Paper towel for dry brushing and cleaning your brushes. And then, of course, a paint palette. Onto the paint list, uh, we have three different colored grungs here, so it's gonna. We need a bit more of a selection of paint. We've got heavy red, bloody red, and uh, some of the yellows and oranges for uh, the red grung. We have heavy green, goblin green, and scorpion green for the green grung, and then for the orange grung, we're gonna use heavy orange, which is the first time I've actually ever used that color, um, and then some gold yellow as well for highlights on that. And then all of their equipment will be. Uh, rounded out with the heavy sienna, with a mix of, uh, uh, sorry, with a wash of black wash, some leather brown, bone white for their weapons, um, some red wash, and some black paint as well. So pumped. These guys are super cute. So I'm going to show you first the, uh, these are the pre painted WizKids minis. Um, these are the ones, doop, 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 doop. they're super, super cute. Uh, poison frogs but they are lawful evil. Don't get it twisted. They will bite your head off. Um, so that is the green and the orange. They're, they're a little yellow, um, but anyways, that's the orange one. And then these are the three that we will be painting today. Um, we have a red, which is the caster cast in the, in the cast system. Uh, we have a green, which is like their tribal warrior cast and their workers. And then we have an orange here, which is like their elite warrior cast. They also have a purple cast, um, which is, uh, I forget what the purple is. I know blue is like their artisans. Purple, I believe, is their scholars. And then gold is like their leader, um, which is super cool too. All right. 
we are going to start off with the green here. We're going to go through heavy green. Uh, heavy green is an extra opaque paint. I use that as a base coat because it will cover in one coat, which is always super awesome and super good. I am going to use my number two brush for that uh, to get some decent coverage there. We are in the chat, folks, both on the D&D Twitch and in the Rompsmith Twitch. So uh, if you have any questions, please write questions in capital letters before your question. And uh, Josh will read them out to me, uh, which is great because then I can focus on painting these guys and not looking at a screen, which is really, really awesome. How you doing, Josh? Doing well. Thanks yeah. for having me. No problem, dude. Thanks for being here. Okay. Um, I'm just going to do a solid coat. I do, um, even on these extra opaque paints, I do... Uh, Dilute them just a touch with some water, just to make them flow nicely and smoothly across the surface. Uh, look at these guys, they are so cute. Too bad they're gonna kill my adventurers. We can only hope. We can only hope. Some of them watch this, Josh. I that's mean, not, nothing. That, that's not nice, Josh. Any questions yet? Uh, no, not yet. Wow, they usually, they're usually in. Oh, very excited about Tides of Wildmount for tomorrow night. Last uh, last session, there was a lot of kind of like role play and kind of hanging out and social stuff for the first half. So uh, I don't want to say it was slow, but it was kind of, you know, your typical kind of getting to know each other sort of stuff. And then the second half just really picked up. Really picked up. And, oh, yeah, and if you guys want to see that, you can see it on the, the, the VOD versions of them on uh, YouTube and on Twitch. They are available for you all to watch. And if you guys are watching this later, um, like in months from now, uh, it won't be on Twitch. It's only on Twitch for a short amount of time. Twitch only keeps videos for a certain amount of time for us because we are just affiliates still. But we are on our way to partner. We have, we have officially, um, we have officially uh, reached partner status, or, or sit all like sorry fulfilled all of the requirements, which is super exciting. So as soon as, as soon as we can, um, we've applied for partner status. So hopefully we'll get that. And uh, yesterday, I am sad to say that as much as we've tried, folks, to keep our box business uh, going during this time and shipping. We have decided to pause, um, like to stop taking subscriptions. Um, we can continue to ship out, but some of our partners um, have shut their doors for safety reasons and aren't shipping and supporting people with their products at this time, some of them. Mm. So uh, unfortunately, that is uh, what what the case is right now. For those new subscribers who has, have just subscribed recently, uh, we will be sending out boxes at your subscription level until we run out of boxes. Once we're out, we will pause your subscription so you won't get uh, charged anymore. And um, and then we will restart again when that time comes. Uh, that also applies to those that have been waiting for boxes four to six from uh, Venture B. We just have not been able to get the pieces that we need um, and aren't confident enough in what we have to provide to, to to be able to provide a decent product. So unfortunately, we're just kind of in a waiting pattern as is most of the world currently regarding those boxes. So I apologize for that. We thank you for all your support, guys, and we will keep you updated on when things turn around on that level. And hopefully soon. So we have our first question from Woodsman41. Yeah, Woodsman. Uh, question. My baby girl is turning 13 and she wanted a Hero Forge custom mini for her birthday. Huh. Could you paint a pixie on one of your shows so she can see how to do it? I think she might be getting into D&D &D after this. A pixie. Nice. I could I could paint a... Do we have pixie? We have sprites. I could do sprites. Yeah. They're really, really tiny though. Um, that's a great question. Yes, let me see what I have and I'll try and put something kind of fairy-ish or pixie-ish or at least fey ish has, have this, has this been going off? Yeah. Oh, it has? Okay, I'm not seeing it because it's blocked by my... Um, I will. I will. I'll try, and, I'll try and fit something in. While that base coat is drying, I am going to move on to the red. Grung. And this guy's a little caster guy. He is so cute. But like I said, he'll bite your face off. Don't get too close. Um, we're going to use heavy red, another extra opaque paint. And this is great for, again, base coating 
Um, I used way too much paint there because these guys are so tiny. So cute and small that I don't need much paint. And folks, I'm not even worried too much about getting it on other areas I won't be painting because we will be covering those anyways. Um, so I just want to make sure that I lay down a solid coat of this, of this base color. That red is so vibrant, it's great. What has everybody been painting lately? That's what I'd like to know. I'd like to know what folks have been painting during this time. Or what other D&D related things have, have they been doing? I'd love to hear from people and find out. I've been doing lots of painting myself, tons and tons. I'm really excited to do the little, these guys have these little like black spot patterns on them, which is gonna be a lot of fun to to put on them. Uh, next question is from D Nicole 32 Question, do you find it easy to paint over other things that you'll paint a different color later? So yes, um, now I'm, I'm careful not to paint dark colors over areas that I will paint with lighter colors later, though I tend to start dark and go light. So, um, and in those cases, these extra opaque colors are great at covering um, darker colors. And so I'm not too worried about it at all. Unless I'm gonna do something like, something has to get to white, and then you're gonna have to do multiple coats, but I'm not too worried about it. And then in the chat, Korgek88 just finished their young red dragon. Nice. Uh, using your tutorial. Very good. Post pictures and, and tag us, please. Uh, we wanna see. Wood one uh, painted their first mini, a Dwarven Cleric, which you can find in our Discord channel. Nice, we have a yeah. Painting channel there. Yeah. Um, and for those that may, may or may not know, we have a Discord channel. Um, and I'm sure one of the moderators will post that link. Uh, our moderators have been doing an incredible job thus far for us. We're very happy. And Shout out. Lord Oric, one question. Have you done the Stone Giant yet? Uh, yes, not in... Not on the show. We did it at one of the one of the um, at one of the conventions, and I think it's on Facebook. Um, I don't think we did one here. So, but maybe we will. I do have a, an extra stone giant, so maybe I will. And it wasn't me. It was um, Uncle Adam from Tabletop Minions that painted it for us. So, um, yeah, maybe we'll do that. I was looking at it today, thinking hmm, maybe I should do a stone giant, but I think I will. This is the first time I've ever used the heavy orange, so we'll see how that goes. It's actually um, kind of peach colored. Interesting, I wonder if I have to, maybe I've never used it, so maybe I just need to give her. Oh yeah, the heavy orange is quite light. Interesting. Well, we'll see how this goes, folks. We will see how this goes. Yeah, it's like a skin color. Huh. Is it maybe not mixing? Really shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Gary Diamonds just asked, I came in slightly late. What is it you're painting tonight? I am painting the Grung, which are these little toad-like tribal warriors um, that, again, you may or may not see in our uh, campaign. Tides of Wild Mount coming up in the next couple months. I typically like to focus paint on painting stuff that we'll be using in our um, in our camp in our streams, just because it motivates me to continue to go here. That is a really light color, um, and when I do these tutorials, I don't usually choose like I choose my colors ahead of time, but I don't test them or anything. So uh, I like to kind of solve those problems live. I think that that's useful and helpful. So. I'm gonna let that sit, and I'm gonna see what happens when I put the the red wash over it, and see if it see if it oranges up at all. If not, I may need to go back and rebase coat it with a mix of some colors here. We'll see. 
And Sidefar asks, after the two we've seen and the painting role you're on, how many done now of the full team? Uh, of our of PC our minis? Yeah. yeah. Um, I have done, well, two. So I, I did the two. I did, um, I did, uh, who are the two I did? Ayla. Uh, yeah, Ayla, Ayla and Bacalhau. Yeah. 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 Uh, there were some uh, printing uh, considerations and errors on my end. Um, so I'm waiting for a couple more new ones to arrive, uh, with some, with some changes made. So, uh, as soon as those arrive, I'll, I'll do the rest. I was going to try and do plunk rock by tomorrow, but I have a lot of adventure prep to do. So probably not going to get a chance to finish anymore before tomorrow's, but within the next week or so, they'll all be done. Okay. Um, okay, so that, like I said, it's kind of a pinky color. Uh, we will see how that goes. It's m much more orange in the studio than it is on on screen, so um, we'll see. We will see what we will see. I'm going to go back to green, and what I'm going to do is to work up the color. Um, typically, I just put a color on top of a color. I'm going to start mixing more on the show. Uh, a lot of you folks have kind of followed us from the get-go. Thanks. That, that looks like a subscription. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Or subs. bits. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so I'm gonna, actually going to mix this goblin green with some heavy green and use that as the first highlight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically focus on everything. This is going to be my first mid-tone color. And I'm going to focus on everything but the deepest recesses on the miniature is the plan. Uh, Warp Saint One asks, uh, what's your setup? What are you using to clean your brush and thin out the paint? And uh, to answer your question, I printed out D&D miniatures for my nieces and nephews in the group by DM. Just painted a dire wolf. It's their first real big fight. Nice. Those are all very exciting things. Um, I am just using this thing of dirty water because I am a brutal, uh, I'm not a very, a little cute frog butt. Uh, sorry, I mean, that was weird. Uh, <laughs> the isolation is clearly getting to me, folks. But um, yeah, I, I just use water to thin the paints. Uh, I've never had an issue using anything else. Dirty water even, or not dirty, but just like water that I've been using for other stuff isn't too much of an issue. Uh, it doesn't seem to change the color on the on the paints. There are other painters out there that are probably cursing me right now and saying, no, that's not the case, but that is my experience. Um, now these grung, I don't think the pre-painted grungs have a lighter belly. I didn't consider that. Um, and I don't think poison dark frogs have a lighter belly. I think they're all one color all around. I so. Um, so I think I'm gonna leave these one color because that's the way it is, but you can see I am slowly working up that mid-tone. Now I'm gonna go back in with uh, my zero brush because the two is a bit too big. And I'm gonna go with straight goblin green and, and then just, again, this is going to be another highlight here. And we want these to be nice and smooth. So I'm just going around and picking out all of the highest kind of details. Um, remember that we still have another step above this, which is the Escorpina green. I have to say that I'm under contract with Vallejo to say Escorpina. It's not true. I'm totally lying about that. But it's fun. Although I think Alex would probably not be happy if he heard me say that. Okay. All right. And so this will be the... Oh, he's so cute. Oh, we don't have jungle music going. Oh, we don't. Yeah, hit that hit that music, DJ. We always play a little Sirenscape um, to kind of pass the time. And, and today, because we're doing grung, there we are. We're going to use the jungle. What's it called? Tropical jungle? Uh, yes. Tropical jungle sound set from Sirenscape. We used this um, 
in Palma, Florida on our live stream. Oh my gosh, this frog butt. This little grung butt. It's so weird that I'm saying grung butt. I think it's passable. <laughs> it's, it's passable as weird? No, or, no, no. Or, or, or like okay. allowed? Allowed, yeah. Okay. Because, come on. Uh, question from Wangadin in uh, uh, Sakura agreed with you about how cute it is. So. Right? <laughs> uh, question from Wangadin in the D&D chat. Is there any way to stop fine brushes from curling at the end over time? Ha! All my brushes curl, folks. I don't know how to stop it. If anybody has a magic re uh, way to do it, even these do, you can see that they curl in the end there, have a little curvature. I tend to just start using it to my to my favor. So basically, if it starts to curl, I, u I paint in that direction and use it to get around corners and stuff. Um, if you clean your brushes with uh, Master's uh, brush cleaner, and then um, that can help after you're done. Uh, and then make sure that once your brushes are kind of, once you've rinsed them, that you pull them to a point again like this and twist, that will help. And then dnicole 32 asks, are you putting any detail on the grung, spots, or texture? Yes, I will be putting, definitely put putting detail. The spots will be there. That is definitely happening. So now I've mixed in some Escorpina green here and I'm just blending up the color. I want him to be a nice bright green. So I'm just leaving again. Now this is, I'm just doing a, a, a smaller area than I was before. But, but at this point I'm, I'm, I'm picking out main kind of uh, shapes within, within the grung physiology. JPod asks, do you use an airbrush for anything at this scale, or do you find that it's more effort, time consuming than just using a traditional brush? Yeah, you hit it, you hit the nail on the head there. Um, it's definitely more time consuming uh, and really not worth the cleaning that it takes for, for this. I wouldn't use an airbrush for this size. Uh, the detail is just too small. I mean, there are some people who are really super talented with airbrushes that, that may you know feel differently or, or whatever, but I, for me, just not worth it for me. Uh, and like I said, I'm just following the contours of the head and kind of picking out some of the main areas here and then realizing, wait a second, I have all these spots to put on. So because of that, I don't want, I want a nice kind of blank canvas on his head. So I'm solidifying this color a little bit more. Warped Saint One asks, what's a good starter kit from Vallejo? I've been using some acrylics I bought, but thinking about diving into Vallejo. Yeah. Um, they have a game color kit, and that'll be great. It doesn't have the extra opaques in it, so you'll have to order those separate. And it doesn't have washes, I think, but that is a, there's a great little starter set. Um, maybe if one of the mods can kind of find it online there. Um, I think it's available on on, through, on Amazon through one of their suppliers, but I'm not positive. But that game color starter set is pretty awesome. Uh, that said, uh, WizKids is release or Vallejo is releasing a WizKids paint line, um, which I have some of the sets here, um, not readily available right in front of me. But uh, if you watch a couple episodes ago, I actually went through them and showed them off. Uh, there's two 40 paint kits. Uh, pulled from the game color line, so the regular Vallejo paints. Um, and you can, sorry, you can see how I just picked out the the toes there. Um, from the regular Vallejo line, so that once you kind of run out of a color, you can just go to the rack and pick out an, uh, more of it. Um, and ten technique sets for different types of miniatures within the WizKids line. So, very super excited about those. We uh, at Realm Smith. Were the ones that um, curated the entire uh, line for WizKids and Vallejo and just super excited to be a part of that and to bring that to you. And then there are uh, tutorials within each of the technique sets and the kits for how to paint um, minis using the, the paint. So we're super, super pumped for that. Okay, and I'm gonna go just with straight Escorpina now. And now I'm just doing basically like line highlights for areas that would be 
the touch kind of the highest by by light so if you can see I've done a little bit on the eyelid there um, along the crown of the head here kind of like that the bridge kind of has a little bit of a of a ridge there the ridge along the side Kat Matari says, so I was late, but did Jason start with a dark color for the base, then is picking out the highlights? Yes, so that is exactly what I did. Um, and I, that's typically what I do. Um, it's, it's rare that I go from light to dark. There are exceptions to that, but for the most part, I'll go dark to light. And fading at the edges asks, do we know when the Realmsmith kits will come out? Uh, yeah, the Vallejo Whiskets kits come out in the summer, I was told. So, June, July, I guess. I don't know if there's been any slowdowns because of the current state of the world. But from what I've been told, um, kind of, it's a summer. Early to late summer, but I can keep you guys posted on that if I hear anything else. Oh, these guys are so cute. And we're almost done this this one guy. Well, we're almost done the green. But there's not much else other than... Okay. Good. All right. Um... to be a bit lighter so I'm just kind of broadening the areas and you can kind of play it as you go I may actually even because we're doing black spots I'm gonna fill in this whole area here with that light green um, just to give a nice clean base for the spots on his on his head and a couple more highlights on his tush like that. And again, I'm hitting his uh, his calves, his heels, his toes. Oh, I forgot his belly. Little, he should have a little paunch here. Little toe paunch, there we go. All right. That is Green Grung. And you can see the difference between the pre-painted and what I did here. Uh, I've just added a lot of a lot more depth. Um, it's just not a solid kind of color. You can see the difference there. All right. Um, let's go orange because I don't know how this is going to go. It's probably going to require more work than I than I've done. So I'm going to get red wash. Make sure it mixes really nice because the wash is sometimes pool in the bottom. Um, and we're going to see how this red wash kind of acts on the surface here of this or heavy orange. If it doesn't work, I'm going to have to go back a little bit. Yeah, I might. Yeah, it's kind of coming out, uh, kind of coming out pinkish, although it's good to know that this color exists, even though it's not really an orange color. Um, it's good to know that I have that, that option. What I'm going to do actually, to make it more orange, is I'm gonna take some yellow, and I'm gonna mix it with my red wash. And we're gonna see if I can bring back or infuse some orange here for almost like a glaze color. Let's see how this goes. Left my brush in the... Never do that, Jason. Never do that, folks. Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, that's making it more orange. Yep. Scruffy Fairy asks, sorry for Scruffy being, Fairy, I like that. Sorry for being a noob, but I always played D&D and Cyberpunk as a group storytelling thing. I've not been into miniatures since 90s. What game are you playing with these? What cyberpunk slash Shadowrun type games can you use miniatures with? Do you guys run your games like 40k Warhammer used to run? 
Interesting. Okay, so we are, we are using these for Dungeons and Dragons, and these are official Dungeons and Dragons miniatures. Um, I run them. Um, so the way that I run them in my streams, which are my home game, basically, effectively, um, I run them for major moments within the story, whether it be like a cinematic kind of encounter or a combat encounter or something like that is where I will use these. So I wouldn't use these necessarily for the entirety of the, that's way more orange, it's great. Um, so I wouldn't use these for the entirety of the, of the session, I would just use them for special moments. Um, and then what was the other question? And then, uh, do you guys run your games like 40K Warhammer used to run? I wonder what that means. Um, not sure exactly what you mean. If you can clarify that for me, then I can ask. I played lots of uh, Warhammer, so. And then D Nicole 32 asks, when do you know what's the best highlight method for the miniature? Dry brush versus layering? Yeah, um, personal preference. Uh, for me, sometimes I'll, I, I could dry brush these very easily. Um, that would be the quick way but I felt like getting a smooth coat would be easier uh, by layering layering on the colors. Uh, for dry brushing though, I typically as a rule of thumb, uh, dry brush things that have lots of texture. So if there's fur or, or grass or ground or sand or something like that, I would use, I would use the dry brush for that. Um, that's kind of my, my go-to. I am using a black wash here folks, just to bring some shadows into this red grung. Um, that co the red color is super vibrant on it, and I just want the the detail to come through. So I'm just using a black wash on it first before I go any further. And Scruffy Fairy clarified that you actually answered it. It was basically if you use them for the whole game. Oh, I see. Special moments. Right, 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 right. Yeah, it's just uh, for for me. I mean, I I was brought up and I grew up playing D and D very much theater of the mind. Um, and that was all we did. We didn't have miniatures. We used to paint kind of miniatures when they had like the Raw Partha ones and so on. But for the most part, it was all theater of the mind. Um, and I just find that miniatures, especially the wealth of them these days, you can see good folks how that turned out nicely. Um, these days, uh, there's there's a, a wealth of miniatures that just gives spatial awareness. So when people are playing the game, they're able to kind of understand where people are standing or or where they are in the environment um, that's that's what I use use it for okay I'm gonna go back to my green guy oh he's so cute uh, while those guys dry and we're gonna paint like the base and some other things too so I'm just gonna put them in my mini holder here and I'm gonna use heavy sienna uh, I don't know if I'm gonna use heavy sienna for the base do I want it that dark? Yes, because then they'll pop more. Nice wet jungle mud floor. Now, they're really tiny here, so I want to be really careful not to get the base, which I just did. And I'm just going to use a clean brush that I haven't used before little bit of water on it and I can just wipe that paint right off. So Lego Myego 1678 oh. asks, Jason, do you play the plan the pan flute only slightly sarcastic? <laughs> <laughs> because they want a Realmsmith band. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Lego? Uh, I wish I did and I would. Um, although now now I might try. Don't tempt me, Lego. Tune in for the next behind the screen. Yes, tune in for the next behind the screen while I learn how to play the pan flute. That'll be riveting. Hilarious. I used to play the recorder in school, but I think everybody did. Pretty sure that was a it's a rite of passage to play the recorder in elementary school. Oh yeah. This music's got me jamming. why it makes me like shake like this. I don't know why. That's my go-to. Just using heavy sienna for the base here. I'm super pumped for this cyberpunk game tonight. It's gonna be fun. 
Matthew Lillard is always a a joy. <laughs> yeah. And you just never know what he's going to do. But he always brings it. But he always brings it. Yeah, Matt doesn't go half half speed. Half anything. Half anything. <laughs> he just dives right in. It's so fun to play with him. Um, and then, of course, playing with playing, having Mike Pondsmith, the creator of Cyberpunk. Yeah, that's um, surreal. Game mastering is pretty insane. Again, folks, if you weren't with us at the beginning, um, tonight we are doing playing a cyberpunk game. It's part two of our Gary Con cyberpunk game, game, <laughs> game mastered by the creator Mike Pondsmith. It's gonna be a blast. All right, so that's the base on him. I think I'm gonna go back and do the base on the others too. Might as well. Orange dude is almost almost dry from a wash perspective. So by the time I'm done, now there is some ground between his toes, but this is one of those cases where if I try to get my brush in there, I'm just gonna paint over the, the toes. I probably should have maybe done the base first, but you still get the idea, especially when I put a wash on this ground, that there is a delineation on his toes. So I'm not too worried about it. Cute little froggy toes. I think I think I secretly. I think go I, on. I think I <laughs> go on. Uh, I think I secretly want these guys to be good. Like I want them to be nice and helpful to the PCs. Not like pets because they're sentient like race, but but like I just I want. But they're not. They're evil. They're lawful evil. It's not nice. But they're pretty awesome, and their their history and their story is really cool. They have this, as poison dart frogs do. They have this toxin. I really hope my players aren't watching. Players, if you're watching, cover your ears. Um, they have a toxin that uh, they excrete from their skin, so that upon contact, if you fail your Constitution saving throw, you are poisoned for a minute. I think. Yeah. Even if they know about it, it won't help them. Which, no, no, it's true. It's true. And they can, like, poison their weapons and stuff, which they typically do. It's fun. And then the these guys, the elite guys, I think, have a an ability called... What is it called? It's called the Chur. Um threatening chur or something like that where they make a sound and if you're within 15 feet and if you fail your um, your saving throw you are stunned for a minute and that's not cool I think it's a minute which man in combat that's not that's not good anyways orange guy so that worked out a little wash of a red wash with a little yellow in it made it made it orange. I am going to also paint his little quiver, his cute little quiver, on his back, just the center of it, and then I'll do the edges in leather brown. Questions are quiet tonight. Uh, Sakura 163 just asked, I can only find the model version of the Vallejo paints, not the game paints. Is there a big difference? Uh, yes, there is a big difference. So model color is was designed and mostly used for um, historic kind of gaming. So uh, like Dust and other games that are kind of World War II or historical battle. Uh, so the colors are much more realistic and true to kind of real world applications um, so you can do camo so there's a ton of color like versions of green and and khaki and all that kind of stuff whereas game color is more of a fantasy color line for your war gaming and tabletop RPG kind of needs so you definitely want game color if you are looking at tabletop RPG usage now there may be just a shortage 
in general right now. That is what you folks might be experiencing if you're trying to order. Although I do know somebody in our Discord ordered a kit. I can't remember who it was. Coward Duck, was it? No, I can't remember. But anyway, somebody in our Discord ordered a Vallejo set and got it. So they are out there. Okay, and then I will finally jump in and do the ground on the red the Red Ranger. I feel like I'm talking about Power Rangers. Do you think the Grum can transform? <laughs> yeah, what would they if they were to if they were to like if they were like the Voltron, what would they Voltron into? A bigger Grum? A bigger <laughs> Grum? Like a giant toad? Yeah. Maybe like a poisonous gibbering mouther? Oh, jeez. Imagine that. Uh, Scruffy Fairy asks, are these about two-thirds half the size, the 90s stuff I was using? I thought everyone was using Roll20. It's great to see how quick you're doing these. Yeah, so, uh, so this is a regular medium-sized mini. This guy is, yeah, he's about like half the size of a regular medium-sized mini. Yeah. They are small creatures. They may be tiny. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I think they might be tiny. I don't know. But anyways, they're they are small creatures. So, but yeah, folks, that's that's kind of the point of the show is to show everyone that you know painting minis isn't isn't that daunting and can be done fairly fairly expediently. Is that word? Did I just make that up? No, you're good. No, you're good. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Always here for you. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, no. Um, okay, so you can see that worked out nicely. Red Grung is good. I think he is dry, so I'm going to go ahead and start to highlight him. Um, so coming back in, I'm going to use Bloody Red. That is going to be my highlight color. Um, I'm going to try and see what happens when I mix the bloody red with a little bit of heavy red because I don't want it to be too drastic off the top. Let's see what happens. So Gary Diamonds asks, what's the biggest mini you've painted? Um, biggest mini I've painted would be the Kraken. And that was um, so far. There is one bigger that's coming. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Kraken is the biggest mini I've painted. And... Um, and there's a tutorial for that on our channel. Catch on on YouTube. It was a two-part tutorial. But the Frost Giant was a three-part because it was just more detailed. And I spent more time on it. <clears throat> I'm starting to lose my voice. That's not good for You got tonight. a lot more coming. Yeah, I got a lot more gaming coming. Uh, D Nicole 32 asks, what's your favorite music to listen to while painting? This. Somebody in chat did say the pan flute, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so I could do this with my head. I don't know. I don't know. I understand how my head does this for this music, but it does. Um, but that said, I actually don't listen to music while I paint. Uh, I listen to uh, either a podcast. And I usually have video playing, and I've always been told when I, I was told when I was younger that if you, in order to kind of save your eyes and stop from headaches, it's good to. If you're doing something close up like miniature painting, it's good to have something that you can focus on that's a distance away to come back and constantly kind of move your eyes back and forth to be able to kind of not strain your, your eyes uh, or your brain too much. Um, and it really helps to kind of continue uh, to focus. So um, I'll have a video. Uh, typically, actually, what I watch is Critical Role. Um, and I'll have it in the background. And, of course, I can listen to most of it while I paint, and then if something wowy happens, um, then I can kind of tune in for a second and then go back to painting. But I'm not a, I'm not a music listener while I paint, actually. Oh, snap, it's Sap asks, once you place an order for one of your awesome adventure boxes, when does it ship out usually, or the time frame? Yeah, so it's usually, uh, we ship once a month. So it's usually two to three weeks, typically, from, depending on when you uh, when you do that, I had mentioned earlier in the podcast, in the in the show, that um, if you've already ordered, 
and you're a newer subscriber, um, you will get your box. Um, they may be a little touch delayed right now, um, and we're gonna continue shipping until we've run out. The problem is, is that we've had to unfortunately stop subscriptions, and then we're gonna have to not ship boxes when we've run out because a lot of our suppliers are not don't have product in the warehouse like we don't have we're not able to get product for our boxes unfortunately right now some of it so and we don't want to send it piecemeal or anything like that um we're already doing that with some of the paints sending boxes without paints but we don't want to do that with the actual box itself so unfortunately until further notice our box business um is just kind of on hold a little bit uh, except again if you've already subscribed you should get your box within two to three weeks from the time that you that you got it. It used to be quicker, but of course, our filming partner, even though they're open because they're considered essential because they make packaging, um, unfortunately, uh, it's, it is taking longer than expected. So I apologize, people. Um, everybody's kind of feeling this. So uh, as soon as we have some updates and as soon as things kind of start to turn around, we will, we will update everyone on that. And a question slash comment from The Rolling Meeple. I had found the game color kit at Noble Knight Games. There you go. Noble Knight Games, check them out. And folks, I would say before you go to Amazon, let me, let me, let me back up a bit um, there. I said go to Amazon to check. Please go to your local game store. A lot of local game stores are hurting right now. This is, this is killing small business. Um, the state of the world as it is especially gaming stores and so if you have a local game store they may still be shipping out product i know mine are um let's take a little little grung break doop, doop, doop. anyways uh so yeah that is midtones it's washed out a little bit but anyways that's that's midtones that is the bloody red now i'm gonna go full bloody red on it flow by red on it and uh for the next kind of higher highlight here like that and then i'm gonna mix in a little yellow to do the final kind of brightest highlight but this one i want to be a little darker it is the caster of the group and they have they have a bunch of like really cool spells I typically get out the stats and, and read stats, but I don't have... Oh, I wonder if I have... I wonder if my, um, my monster cards have stats for Grung. They may very well. There. So that's the red. And then I'm going to just... I don't know why it's so washed out. Probably because it's wet. Um, go ahead, take some gold yellow mix a little bit of it into my bloody red to make kind of an orange color I'm not mixing like white or off-white because I don't want it to be pink um, I want it to be orange so that is kind of my plan was there a question that I missed uh, there's more I've just no 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 just now I, f I feel like you asked me a question and then I started dancing with the grung uh, no. And then, oh, no, okay. You're good. Yeah. Okay, you were cool. just mentioning, uh, oh, snap, it's sap, did say that his game store does curbside pickup. So I yes, know a few are yes. doing that as well. Curbside, yes, yes, do that, folks. Support your game stores in this time. They need it. And, and that worked out nicely. I like how that, oh, it's really hard to see what I'm doing there because uh, it looks much um, better or much more clear, I guess, in in studio. But anyways. Uh, Shadester asks, was the Kraken bigger than the ship? Oh my gosh, the ship is way bigger. The Yeah, yeah, ship was bigger. Thank you. Thank you, Shadster. Jeez. Leave it to our moderators to like totally make me look like a putz. You are totally correct, and thank you for reminding me. Look at that little cute little grung butt. Just kind of dancing. I'm excited to see that dance tomorrow night. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Now, these guys aren't going to show up tomorrow night, but when they do, yeah. this is the grung music. This is the grung theme song. Because they're going to think like, oh, it's just party time again. Everything's good. Nope. On the floor. Up. Death time. Death by cute toad creature. 
uh, Korgek88 asks, Yeah. Hey guys, how are you? Hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm so good. Your favorite Remoraz guy. Uh, <laughs> oh man. I'm going to paint the young silver dragon, but currently I don't have the chainmail silver, but I have the gunmetal color. What's the difference between the two? Could I use gunmetal instead of chainmail silver? Huge thanks for these tutorials, Jason. Stay safe and remember the Remoraz is watching you. <laughs> oh yeah, that Remoraz. I just don't have a actual uh, unpainted Remoraz right now to do. Um, you know what? This is what we're going to do. I think I'm going to be done with these guys early. What we're going to do is I'm going to just talk through what I did for the Remoraz. I called it a Remoraz, but now I'm going to call it a Remoraz from now on. Just to honor our friend. Um, yeah, that is unfortunate. He's been asking for a Remoraz tutorial for a while. <laughs> And then, These grung are so cute. Have I mentioned that? Uh, okay. Ho Ho Hobo Red 90. <laughs> ho Ho Hobo? Yep. Uh, <laughs> ask, <laughs> what has been your favorite thing to paint? <laughs> uh, yeah, I get that question every show. Um, the, oh, the Beholder mini that I did uh, is probably up there. I'm gonna do another wash, folks. So now that I've made it orange, I'm gonna do a red wash on this guy to bring down that color to a deep orange, and then I can go back in and start to highlight again, which is what I'm excited about. Look at that. But that's really making a difference. For those of you that don't know and are brand new to painting, washes are used for adding shadow and depth to your miniatures. You basically brush it on, let it rest in the recesses and it will add shadow and bring out all that awesome detail in these miniatures I like that oh snap it's sap asks, yeah. jason how do you huh. choose your minis from show to show do your viewers request or do you pick on your own yeah i have a big box of minis upstairs that i just kind of pull out and paint what i should i i I used to do like a month in advance. It's just been really busy and I haven't been able to do that yet. Um, I should be doing that. And maybe I will in the near future. Um, what was the second part of that question? Uh, do your viewers request or do you pick on your own? Yes, viewers do request. You can put in a request, but as you know from uh, Remora's guy, um, I'm not very good at doing that. I used to be, and I am good. If I do have the mini, I maybe will paint it, except for the drider, because everybody's asking me to paint it, but I put it off so far. But maybe I will in the future. Go ahead. I'd love to hear what you want me to paint. Uh, I'm going to go one more level of orange here because I have the green guy beside the, the red guy, and the green guy is just much more interesting than the red guy is right now. So, and red guy's a little jealous, especially because he's in a higher cast, higher level than the green guy. And he's like, yo, why am I dull and boring? So I'm just going to add one more highlight here, one more level of highlight. Uh, Korgek88 would also like to cement that you need not worry because he still loves you. <laughs> Aw, thanks, guys. Love you, too. One last highlight on the toad butt. Okay. That will do for red because I don't want red to look like orange. That's the that's the challenge, right? Because if I go too dark, but this will be the darkest that, that orange goes, and then it's going to go into yellows. So I think I'm good. Um, let's take a look again at pre-painted versus unpainted. This is like... I don't know, I was gonna say something and I blanked. Um, while I'm waiting on those to dry, I'm gonna go start picking out all of the leather brown areas. How are we doing for time there, Josh? Uh, it's currently six o'clock. Woo! Lots of time. Do you wanna grab, uh, there might be two Remoraz in the, in, the, uh, in the display case. Can you grab them? Yes. I'm not sure which, which, which one exactly I wanna show, but. If you can grab that, that'd be amazing. Everyone say thanks, Josh. Oh, that probably didn't sound good at all. Yeah, sorry, viewers. 
Josh just fumbled his mic. I'm in a good mood today. Tell you what. It's this music. I think I'm going to use this music no matter what we paint. Vampires? Jungle music. Whatever. Ain't no thing. So I am using leather brown to paint the shoulder kind of armor on this guy. He's got like cute shoulder armor and it like a, look at that cute shoulder armor. There's like a strap and then I'm also going to use it for the handle on his knife here. Yes, that that one, the finished one is the one I want to show off. I will show you folks in a second, but I am going to you waited long enough for Moraz guy. I don't even know what his name was. I forget, but I'm going to he's forever now known as the Ramoraz guy. There, so I'm just going to do the handle. Uh, his name is Korgek88. Korgek! Yes. How could I forget? I am going to just do all the leather brown areas, and then I will come back and, and, and show you all that stuff. Uh... But yeah, I'm going to do the ends now of the quiver in this leather brown color as promised. And then we got sepia wash to make it all pretty as usual. Although I think I need to come back in here with some heavy brown because, or heavy sienna, because I, oh, oh, just dropped the grung. Sorry, buddy. Because I think the... You know what it is? I'm usually alone for these. And having Josh here has just made me happy. I'm happy to hear that. Oh, thanks, buddy. Uh, Adabel. We could hug it out, but we're social distancing. Yeah. We'll do a six foot air hug. Okay. <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, Adabel Rosette asks My players just made it to Thunder Tree, so I will be finishing up my young green dragon finally. Thanks so much for the tutorials. How did you get into painting minis? Yeah, so first of all, I'm probably going to get beat up in chat for this, but what is Thunder Tree? I don't even know if I know. Do you know what Thunder Tree is? Uh, I do not recognize what yeah, module that's from. I want to know what Thunder Tree is. I think we all do. Tell us what Thunder Tree is, because I'm excited to hear that. Um... And then what was the second part of the question? Uh, and then how did you get into painting minis? Ah, how did I get into painting minis? Started by painting some Ralph Hartha minis way back when I was a kid. Probably 10 or 11 were my first minis I ever painted. And then, and that was back when they were like the lead, the lead minis uh, for D&D. &D. Uh, and we didn't really use them much, but I thought they were very cool. And, of course, as one does when they're a teenager and get really into D&D, &D, you're into all things fantasy. And so we just kind of did everything that we could. So I've painted some minis back then, and then I stopped painting minis for a while, and then got back into mini painting with uh, the Games Workshop Lord of the Rings miniatures, because I was super into the movies, and uh, just into the characters. And so I, I literally picked those up just to paint them, because it was fun. So, and then I entered a, a contest for painting them. I think it was a North America, no, it was a Canadian contest, came in third. Or second, I came in second in Canada, and then got like sent like four thousand dollars worth of like <laughs> Lord of the Rings games workshop minis, and I was like, "All right, here we go!" And so I just became totally just engrossed in painting minis. I just started a Middle Earth playthrough actually with a bunch of buddies. Oh, cool! It's yeah. awesome. So yeah, so then I was really into it, and then um, thank you for the follow. I think that was a follow. Um. So yeah, so I was really into it, and then uh, kind of then got into Warhammer 40k, and then into, and then yeah, and then when I started playing Dungeons and Dragons again, it was like, oh man, there's like a whole world of miniatures for D and D, and then it was just here we are. Uh, I am doing there. He has like a, a bone kind of headpiece. They look like spikes here, but on the actual art. Uh, in D&D Beyond, it's kind of like a headpiece that he's got on top, so whatever it is, I am just going to do that all 
this color and then I'm going to use some bone white to highlight it but that will kind of mix them up and set them apart and then I'm also going to paint the he's got like a rib cage almost with a little skull thank you for the follow um, on his chest and then I don't know what I'm going to do with his staff because I was going to paint it this color actually I will paint it this color because these are going to be like bone color in the end uh, so Thunder Tree is from the Lost Mines of Fandelver D&D starter kit. Oh, I never played Lost Mines. How is it? And I'm assuming there's a, she said, uh, or he or she said, Green Dragon? Uh, Miniature that they were finishing for it? A uh, Silver Dragon. Silver. Yeah. Wow, where are you? No, it was Green Dragon, sorry. It was, okay. Yeah, Green Dragon, yeah. Cool. Uh, and then Ketmatari asks, what are the special effects Vallejo paints? How do you use them? I got a bottle of verdigris, but not sure. Yeah, yeah. I call it verdigris. Um, but uh, yeah, those are just all the effects paints. So uh, verdigris is the kind of patina that is found on um, copper or brass, I guess, when it starts to age. I just totally painted over red areas that I shouldn't have painted over. I'm just gonna go back to bloody red and just do the shoulder with that and it should be fine. Right? It's fine. Um, yeah, so uh, that verdigris, so basically what you do is verdigris is a really, it's almost like a wash. That's kind of turquoisey color. Uh, and you wash it over a metal area, let it rest in the recesses, and then dry brush metal over it, and it goes into the uh, creases and it looks really cool. There's also like fresh blood, dried blood, rust, all that stuff. So basically for weathering and creating special effects on your miniatures. We've used a bunch of them in our streams, so you can go back and take a look. That is, look at this guy. Doom, 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 doom. Um, although he's got like green wraps. Oh, he's got like, they're like green wraps on his arms should do that it's like grass or something mm -hmm. moss moss or something right oh and this guy's got armor i missed and you know what i'm gonna go back and moss it up dean nicole 32 asks jason have you ever done or considered doing other rpg games with your group like call of cthulhu for example ha uh never call of cthulhu um and I'm probably going to get roasted alive for this, but I've never super been into Call of Cthulhu uh, or Cthulhu in general. Um, just not necessarily my thing, which I know it's like everybody's thing in this in this community kind of thing. So, uh, but that said, um, I do play a board game that is really awesome, and I forget what it's called, but it's all based on Cthulhu, um, which is amazing fun. Uh, the Mansion. Uh, Oh my gosh, what's it called? Help me, people. Mansion of Madness. Really good, Mansion of Madness. Super good board game. Um, really, really great. And it's all Cthulhu-based. So that, that's fun. I just, I've never really been, I, I didn't grow up with it or uh, haven't had a lot of um, kind of um, access to it, I guess, or, or, or introduction to it. So maybe it's something I'll get into. Uh, but Cyberpunk is, has been super fun. When I was a kid, I played a lot of uh, Top Secret back in the day. Do you remember Top Secret? Are you probably way too young for that? I just totally ate, uh, dated myself on that one. Uh, but Top Secret is a kind of spy game from like the 80s, and it was really awesome. So we played a lot of that, and that was a lot of fun. So who knows? Uh, right now we're really D&D focused, but uh, we are absolutely open. I mean, we are going into part two of this uh, cyberpunk game, and if people really enjoy it and lots of people watch it, we may end up doing more. So make sure you head on in if you're interested, because there will be probably more where that came from. Um, I am going to now do the orange highlights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this gold yellow, mix a little bit of blood red in it, but mostly gold, gold yellow, just so that it's a light orange color. And then I'm gonna start painting it on to the highlights. Sidefar asks, what did you enjoy painting most from 40K? Oh, um, well, so my army was uh, Marine Army. 
So I did mostly Marines, Black Templars, and Grey Knights. I actually enjoyed Grey Knights the most. Um, even though they were kind of simple, it challenged me to find new ways to kind of tackle a simple paint scheme. So that was my, that was my thing. So now I'm using gold yellow with a little mix of a tiny little bit of blood red in there, bloody red, just to kind of bring it back down to that orangey color. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I did with all the others. I am just super excited to get back around the table with everyone. That's, tell you what, hopefully we can all be safe and this will be short lived. And we can all come back around the table again because that would be awesome. I also wonder if there's a lot of people out there who are playing online, if they found ways to either over Zoom or using Roll20 or Fantasy Grounds. I'd love to hear if people are, are having success with that or not. So please, sound off. Let us know. I'd like to know. I've been told that people are watching our streams as kind of their, you know, as their, their groups aren't meeting right now. Yeah, as they bide their time. As they bide their time. It kind of helps to, to itch their d d itch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been trying to get online going with a lot of friends, but it's so much harder. <laughs> Is it so yeah. much harder? Yeah. Really, eh? Because I know it's hard to get even people around a table sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the biggest downfalls of any group is is coordinating schedules so that everybody could be with work and family and all that stuff. How difficult that can be sometimes, but but you're finding online is even harder. Yeah. Really? Something about Why people already being in their houses and capable of doing nothing makes it hard to get them to do anything, I think. Interesting. <laughs> really, eh? I mean, come on. You don't even have to put pants on. Yeah, I guess getting out of the house, you get away from the family if you can, a little bit of a, of a, of a kind of a escape. But when, you're it, when your f kids are running around and you're trying to slay a dragon, maybe it's a little kind of distracting. Mm. I can see that. My kids don't run around like that anymore. <laughs> They're teenagers. They just kind of stay in their rooms for the most part. Okay, orange. So this is the orange one. He's turning out pretty good, I think. Um, I don't know, even know if I'm going to go any lighter than that because he's pretty light as it is. So you can see. And then the red also looks quite different than the orange, so that's, that was important for me. Maybe one highlight of pure gold yellow. So Sakura163 says my group uses the Discord voice chat and Roll20 to play. Cool. S. Good Kai, we've been playing on Roll20 for almost four years now because our group has spread from New York to Washington State. Oh, wow. Good. I'm glad that people are finding a way to play still. Lord Auric is also using Roll20 and yeah. says in some ways it's even better. Um, huh. Uh, but they still miss being at the table. <laughs> uh, the Rolling Meeple is also on Roll20 to run a Star Trek Adventures campaign. Fun. Uh, Mart Hambles, my family has started using Roll20 to play D&D with our cousins. I did that too at one point. And they use Discord as well. Um, and Tamgood asks, is Joel feeling better? I'm looking forward to the player's table. Yes, he is feeling better. It was just like a 24-hour kind of overnight bug. But he is feeling better, and he will be doing player's table this week. So, Okay, that is... So all of their base colors are done. Um, that is done, done, done. So now... Um, what will I do next? What will I do next? Let me see want to do all the dots and stuff but that's kind of the last the last step um, I'm gonna use a wash I'm gonna get black wash 
and I'm going to start to add some depth to the heavy sienna areas. So anything that's heavy sienna gets a black wash. You want to be really careful though because all this beautiful color that we've we've just completed we do not want to ruin um, by getting wash on it. So um, I just typically because I, I took those colors right to completion just was easier for me to blend that way. So I'm just going to go ahead and be careful in and around these toes, the toady toes, like that. This guy has a lot of that color on him, so we're just going to go in to all of the arrows. Just have fun. And Warp Saint asks, where did you get that miniature holder? Did you make that or 3D print that? No, it's, uh, it's a Games Workshop holder. You can get it at Games Workshop or from Games Workshop. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something, and I forget what it was. Uh, don't forget, folks. I forgot to say earlier. I don't think I mentioned it in the, in the announcements. But we have uh, behind the screen on Tuesday nights. So after our Tides of Wildmont episode, the next night, um, I go basically have a chat slash Q&A session with anybody who wants to ask questions about the uh, Tides of Wildmount campaign or Realmsmith in general or even our last uh, Into the Mist campaign. So join us. Uh, that's Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern um, on Twitch. And then that's from the DM's perspective. And then on Thursdays at 8 p.m., Joel, who plays uh, who played Falfer in Into the Mist and is now playing Plunk Rock, will be doing something called the Player's Table my dog is totally just scratching his cone of shame on the ground over there. It's driving me nuts, but it's okay. Bruno, stop it. Bruno, stop it. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. So, he'll be doing uh, something called the player's table, which is kind of a, a player's look at what happens for Realmsmith. Uh, last piece here is going to be... Um, the ground. Oh, I forgot to do the staff on this guy with the leather brown while I had it. But anyways, last kind of area to add the black wash to is the ground for the caster. Or the, they're called Grung Wildlings is the stat block. There it is. Okay. I don't want to put dots on these guys because I've, <laughs> I've carefully, um, yeah, I've, I've, I've been so careful to to shade them correctly um, or to the best of my ability. All right. Uh, I will go back to the red guy here just so I can finish his staff. Um, time check? It is 619. Cool. And Korgek asks, how's Bruno? Does he still have the collar? He does have the cone of shame. Uh, he's getting better. It's getting much better. Um, it looks like his eye is almost completely healed. So I'm literally just waiting for an appointment from the vet this week so that I can take him in and make sure that he is okay to take the cone off. He's still scratching his face, trying to scratch his face on the ground um, in his cone. So I'm a little concerned, but... He's just got a little bit of a scar um, on his eye. It's a little clouded over, so even though the actual kind of where it ruptured. For those of you that don't know, my um, my Frenchy, my French bulldog um, somehow scratched his, his cornea, his eye, and he's had a cone of shame on for like a month and a half. Poor guy. Yeah, literally since I've known him. If not longer, right? <laughs> yeah, I think longer. <laughs> um, poor dude. So he, he hates it, but if he were to scratch it and make it worse, it just extends the period that he has to have it on. So it's been challenging, to say the least, because he really doesn't even know he has it on. So he just lives life <laughs> like, <laughs> completely like it ain't no thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm taking a lot more time on these. A lot more care with these than I thought I was going to. Okay. Um, last thing is going to be this uh, bone white. So I'm going to use... Uh, oh, 
to over here. <laughs> I was like, where is my bone white? Uh, I'm gonna use bone white. And that is going to be for the um, blades. So anybody who has a, who has like a, a blade, I imagine that it would be like a bone, made of bone. So I'm just gonna do that on this guy. Right there, like that. And I don't think there's anything else that needs to be bone white on him. Into here, I'm also gonna do the arrowheads. Is he trying to come over here? Yeah. Bruno, do you want to say hi? Did you hear us talking about you? He's so loud with this thing too. Like he, he tries to scratch his neck with his cone on, realizing that he can't scratch through the cone, but he tries anyways. He's probably gonna do it right now. Bruno, I didn't show you any attention. Did you wanna? I also have to do these arrows too. All the flights on the arrows with this color. Bruno, this is a little bit of a time consuming part, but I'm just gonna try and quickly get through the flights here. Like that. And then we're gonna use a nice sepia wash on that. And for, for the flights, of the arrows in the uh, quiver, I'm just going across them, brushing basically the edge of my brush, so it's catching the edges of the flights here, like that, just to kind of give the, except that one, which I wanted to. And then just going back in and kind of catching what I want to catch here. This music. Okay, that should be good on him. And then I don't think, does he have anything? Yes, he does. So now I'm gonna go ahead, all, the, all these bony kind of spike things on his head, I'm just gonna hit the top of them. And then again, when I use a sepia wash on here, it's gonna kind of blend it all together and make it look really cool. Oh yeah, and I have to do all of this chest stuff. So I'm just, again, edge of my brush, trying to get in here and paint all the little rib areas on, on his necklace, his bone necklace, as well as the skull in the middle, like that. Um, I did say I was gonna go green on that, on his arm things. Okay, uh, next we'll go uh, sepia wash and then I'll do the green stuff. So a little sepia wash, my favorite wash, works just like the black. Basically we're adding depth and shadow and you can see it'll bring out the texture even in this knife here. So when I do this, I don't want it to be, I still want it to be kind of light, so I'm not gonna let it pull too much, but it will just give it a bit of a bone texture and a bit of and a depth in some of the detail there. That's on him. I keep almost picking up these pre-painted ones. Um, here it's gonna be really important in these flights. So um, the arrowhead, I want it to look kind of old and kind of dirty. Same with these arrowheads. Now this will go into all of the little feather texture and really bring out that awesome texture. I'm just gonna kind of lather it on here. Not too much so that it pulls the detail, but enough so that. And it, that bone white is so stark when it goes on, but as soon as you add this wash, it really, really starts to help it to kind of blend. Chat's quiet today. Mm -hmm. Okay. And really says with this music and your soothing voice, <laughs> it's too relaxing. Yeah, there's usually like nonstop questions. Maybe the 
Maybe the um, the music is too soothing. Flute's gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone close their eyes. Imagine they're in a hammock somewhere. Uh, Korgek asks, Jason, you know that before the end of the stream, you'll have to come up with three different voices for these little guys here, right? Oh, totally. I was working on a voice for them today, actually. <laughs> I am planning on using them in our campaign. I imagine they speak Grung, so they don't speak Common, so it won't be English um, that I use. But I, Thank you for the follow. Uh, but I imagine it would be like... Am I really going to do this? Uh, I imagine it'll be like I wanted like kind of a throated like kind of sound because they're frogs. And I imagine they would croak through their language. I'm not going to do it. But I imagine it would be it stay would tuned. be kind of stay tuned. Stay tuned. I'm going to work on it. Watch it on the stream and then let me know what you think because <laughs> I don't have it quite down yet. But yeah, definitely stay tuned. All right, again, using CPO wash on all of these areas. Look at that. Love what it does. Um, I'm going to use CPO wash on the staff, and I'm not going to. This I'm just leaving kind of leather brown, and then adding that, it's going to make it like a darker wood color. Uh, Bikini Boys just asks Is that water inside the cup or any kind of specialized cleaning product? Just water, dirty water. Shouldn't be dirty, but it is. Because I'm lazy. You know what? If you want to go into Sirenscape there and hit the nighttime one, it'll change up the music a little bit. We're going to bring it down near the end. Bring it down. All right. Um, okay, so this guy is almost done. What am I going to do here? Um, this guy, well, they're all almost done, I guess at this point. Don't think I'm going to highlight those areas at all. Oh, I see. Forgot to wash on this guy because his leather and his armor needs a wash too. But I kind of like how it just turned out without even highlighting the armor. I think I'm just going to leave it. And S. Good Kai asks, yeah. you may have said earlier, but I missed it. How many more Hero Forge characters do you have left to paint? You rocked it on all the ones you've shared so far. Thank you. Four. Four more. There are four more. I did all of the uh, initiative markers. Another four more. Uh, actual character minis. Okay. Uh, I am going to now use black to paint all of the eyeballs. So, oh, I almost... My... My... my uh, elbow came off the chair and I almost got black on his nose and that would have sucked. Just like that. Black. Be his I, first spot. What's that? So it'd be his first spot. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, that's a good point. See? Always solving problems, Josh. That's why you're here. Solving problems. Happy to do so. Um, so yeah. So the, Oh my gosh, that makes them so cute. And then uh, I might do like a little white glare mark on his eyes. Now the orange one I can actually see a bit better. The green one was hard to see where the eye was, but and I don't know which of these is the wash and which of these is the paint. So I'm just going to guess. Warped Saint One says, what screams lawful evil about tiny toad people? What right. about a sped up croak at the end of a sentence for their voice? Sped up croak. Yeah, totally. I think it's just going to be like my typical goblin gibberish voice. Okay. Last one, the red one. Get some eyes. And then I'll do some dots. But they actually have different patterns for each cast. So I want to take a look at the... At the um, example on the back of the blister pack and on the pre-painted ones to kind of get what I want here. Okay. There we go. Um, I think... Hmm. Yeah, the orange ones have... I don't want to, but the orange ones have, like, black all around their mouth. Always. But I don't want to. Do I have to? 
don't wanna. I really don't wanna. Well, let's see. What I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll just do some like. Oh, this hurts my heart. There. Just like on the tip of his nose here. I'm just gonna do that. Looks like he has a mustache. Look. <laughs> hey, Ming. How you doing? And we found the grung voice, everyone. <laughs> yes, we may have. <laughs> He's like, hey, what are you looking for? Um, a question from... Do you spice? <laughs> <laughs> like, he looks like he has a little goatee. <laughs> yes. From he is staying like that. Adabelle Rosette, how do you seal your minis when they are done? Yes, I use um, Vallejo Matte Varnish. Um, okay, I'm going to do what I'm, not, what I'm supposed to. There. I don't like it, but no. he would be accepted <laughs> if it wasn't for his proper shun. Yeah, he would have been shunned for sure. Uh, now he has some around here, so I'm gonna put some like around his arms. So there's another question. Oh uh, yeah, uh, Lego Myago 1678. Have you considered painting the French bulldog in Dungeons and Doggies to look like Bruno? Good idea. Should totally do that. Should totally. Okay, I'm just gonna do like some random spots on his back, like that. I'm not gonna do a lot on the orange guy. That's gonna be, because his mouth made me hurt my heart. <laughs> uh, now these guys seem to have a bit like larger spots, the green guys, so I'm gonna do like a one like that goes like this and then like this and then and Danny Danden in the D D chat says first of all didn't love D D streams until I saw Into the Mist was really cool. Second, what type wow. of color are you using? Water based. First, thank you so much, that means a lot. Um, every time we hear that, it's incredibly humbling and uh, is why we continue to do this. So thank you so much for saying so. Uh, second, what kind of paint are we using? Uh, yes, and is it water-based? Yeah, so I'm using Vallejo Game Color Paint. Uh, it's a professional um, uh, miniature painting paint. Why I say professional, I mean just that's what it's meant for. Wow, those markings really bring it out, eh? Mm -hmm. really bring it to life. Um, and uh, yes, they're water based. They're water based, water based acrylics. Now these guys have like just like little marks on his nose, like this, like three little marks, little tribal markings. And then I'm gonna do some more here on the side. What is Bruno barking at? Who knows? He just loves to do that. Lately, apparently. He's decided he's a barking dog now. Everybody's got to try something new. That's you know what? Team, you know what I think it is? I think I think having the collar around his neck, I mm -hmm. think it's aged him. So now he's like that grumpy old man on the... on the. He's going senile. On the stoop, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he just... He thinks he sees things. Okay. That is my grong. Horgek asks, earlier you said that the biggest mini you painted was the Kraken, but then you said that there's a bigger one coming. Did you mean the ship or a still unannounced monster? Oh, so yeah. What I meant was uh, McGill. So uh, for Todd, uh, the friend who we lost last year, uh, I got a miniature, a foot tall Hero Forge mini printed for him um, that I am going to paint. Um... You might, if you want to grab it, you can grab it, and I can show people. And I just dusted it with thing, so that will be eventually the biggest mini that I've ever painted. Um, not really a mini, really. Um, okay, so for these little glare marks, I'm going to take a little bone white and just boop in the corner there. That just adds a little bit of personality to these black eyes and their cold hearts. Do it again on this guy. I'm doing it in the top corner because that is where the light would come from. Oh, the remora, as I said, I was going to show it to you. A little, little glare mark. Thank you. And 
there. And then, oh, this guy, the black came off his, rubbed off his eye. That's not good. Time check? Uh, 6.36. Okay. And uh, Dog Breath 48 says, when you switch minis next time, can you talk about that thing holding the base? Yes. Okay. So that is a, just, that's a mini holder. When you get old like me, your fingers start to ache um, when you're holding small objects. And so this just uh, helps to loosen the grip a bit. Um, and it's a mini holder. And it expands. And it's made by Games Workshop. Um, but yeah, there we go. That's the little glare in the eyes there for these guys. Um, man, these guys are cute. Okay. Uh, for this guy, the only last thing that I wanted to do was to add a little bit of goblin green. And I'm going to make kind of that mossy, that stuff around his arms I saw on the, on the art is actually green. And it will add a bit of color to this guy to make him look a little different. So I'm just going to come down again. Kind of re-base coated green. Like that. And then I'm just gonna give it a wash actually with sepia and then it'll look kind of earthy. A sepia wash. Warped Saint One asks, what print brushes are you using? Do you just pick up random ones? Uh, yeah, so paint brushes, these are Vallejo brushes. Um, uh, but yeah, there are lots of great brushes out there. Um, and there are specific sizes based on the area that I need to paint. Um, and so for smaller areas that I need to really kind of focus on, I'll, I'll use a, a zero and then, of course, up to my two. And then my dry brush, which is a wider brush, which I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that. Basically, what I'm going to do is going to get some leather brown on my brush, wipe most of it off on a paper towel until hardly anything comes off it. And then I'm just going to brush it onto the ground area on the base and you can see that it's just giving it a super subtle little highlight like that that's it and that is that is enough i think this guy's i'm gonna call this guy done i don't even think i'm gonna do a wash on that on that green i think i like yeah yeah well it's all it's a little tiny bit of green so it's already it's already dry so i can just Add a little bit of a wash, and that will bring out the texture and just kind of finish it up there. Perfect. That grung is done. A little red grung. Next grung. Grab that leather brown again. Just highlight the edge. I'm being careful to try not to hit the black kind of base he's on as well as his body. Although at this point, adding a little leather brown, you can see it's kind of putting a little bit of uh, dirt. It looks like there's dirt on his legs. So that's cool too, actually. Um, and he is done. That is green grung done. And then orange grung with the black face. Looks like he ate a, a lot of ch chocolate or something. Um, for him, I'm going to do the same thing go through here and highlight using a dry brush technique. And then I'm also going to use that technique on some of the other areas here. I need a bit more paint. Adabel Rosette, comment slash question. I like to seal them with a matte finish and then use a gloss finish on the eyes and claws. Have yes. you ever thought about doing that? Yes, I do that often, actually. Um, if you watch, like, the Beholder tutorial or even the Zombie Beholder, I think I did that on. So a lot of uh, minis I'll do that. So I'll hit it with a, I'll hit it with a uh, matte varnish, either spray or brush on. And then, and then after that, hit it with a... Uh, hit the glossy areas. They're supposed to be glossy with gloss. I'll even do it in like monster mouths and stuff. Uh, but you can see all, a lot of that on our Beholder uh, tutorial, which is uh, on, our, on our YouTube page. Um, only thing I'm going to do for this guy, though, is I'm going to go back in with some bone white and just bring out 
the detail in this arrowhead a bit more. So just closer to the edge like this, just so that it looks sharp and dangerous like that. Uh, and maybe just on the edge of this, these flights a little bit because they're looking a little, uh, they're getting lost a little bit. So I'm just going to touch the tops of these flights here. A little along the edge, too, I think. There. Okay, um, and this guy. Oh, also going to go in and do the edge on his knife here. Ha-ha. Okay. That is a wrap on our three grungs, folks. That is less than, or just over an hour and a half. Less than, actually, because we started a little late and we did announcements. So probably like an hour and a half or so. And we've got three grunks to speak of. Super cute. Look for them in Tides of Wildmount, which is our campaign that is coming up again, or tomorrow and for the rest of the, the foreseeable future. We have five here that will be something for the players to kind of take a, take a stab at, literally. Uh, this is the remora as I painted. I do have a tutorial uh, recorded, but it isn't edited. And I've been trying to figure out how to do it because we've kind of changed our formats for that. But basically, I used a heavy blue magic blue with a uh, dry brush of electric blue and then some wolf gray, I think, for a final kind of hi uh, highlight there. For here, I used a uh, hot orange that went up to uh, gold yellow, moon yellow, and then um, off white on the edges. Uh, for the eyes, I used green and then just kind of stippled it with a lighter color. I don't know what that was. That might have just been... Uh, and then in the mouth, I did this. I used the same colors as I used for the spikes on the spines um, for that. <clears throat> and then on the base, uh, this was uh, electric blue with a dry brush of off-white, and then I used the snow effects for the, we uh, the weathering effects from... Uh, or the environment effects, sorry, from Vallejo. And that is the Remoraz. There you go, Remoraz guy. Finally, you get to see a Remoraz... Uh, and then those are the areas. And then if I do get one, hopefully at some point I will paint it. But uh, there it is for you. Cardiac does say, oh, God, it's amazing. Huge thanks, Jason. No problem. No worries. Again, thank you so much. We have to go and set up for our Cyberpunk game. I'm so glad that I was able to paint three of these grungs in a session. I'll post some pictures on Instagram of them uh, right now, actually. Um, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day, night. Hope to see you back for Cyberpunk today at 7.30 Eastern. Tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern for uh, Tides of Wildmount. Uh, Tuesday night at 8 p.m. for uh, Behind the Screen. Thursday for The Player's Table. And then, of course, back for Nolzers on Sunday. You guys have a great night. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, our moderators. It's been a lot of fun and looking forward to next week. See you guys.